Should I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so in three months ago, I had no knowledge of robotics at all. And I hadn't programmed with Arduino at all. So I was like just basically a new robotics engineer. But with the great help from Hanzo and Carl, I learned the basics of Arduino. And I started to play around with a uh, smart inventor board that they had around here. And after that, they gave me this stream mode to build and work on. So first thing that I tried to do is make it work. And since I had some programming background, I thought it would be pretty easy because you know, walking is what we do daily. But as soon as I programmed it, it failed miserably. <laughs> and after multiples and multiples of attempts, I found out that programming itself wouldn't do. And since I don't have a software to figure out where the momentum goes and the weight holds, I actually hand calculated the angles and the weights for each movement that it made. And I made it I made it walk. And I made it walk forward and backward. And after doing that I wanted to make it like do some cool boom like such as cool boom. <laughs> And the funny thing is that I didn't know how the robot should react. So I was standing in front of the mirror as if I was the humanoid with like a couple joints that I have and I just move my body and all along with the movement that I make with my body, I'll just write that down in my notes and just try to program it program it through Arduino. And this is what I have so far. So basically it's a humanoid with 16 servo motors. And usually it has a sensor in the front, but I didn't use the front sensor, but except I use four IR sensor, left, right, front, and back. So let me just start it. What are you using? Uh, Ardu X200. It's just custom board. For yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So it's your board? So if you start it, the initial movement is just to, you know, have uh, air breathe in and breathe out. I, I wanted to express that to this humanoid, but it's pretty difficult to make the movement really like flow. Basically, this is the first base movement. And when the color is blue, it's basically in like the still silent, like its own natural mode such as like if you see a guy who does kung fu he has this natural move before he attacks right <laughs> I, I wanted to make it attack but that's way more difficult so i made it defend itself and attack when i cover let's say right ir sensors <laughs> and it goes back to its original position and keep does that if I do that to left IR left IR sensors, <laughs> I mean overall it's just basically a fun project to you know get to know how the robot actually moves and how difficult it is just to make it walk and just to move sideways because like as you move sideways, I also have to think about how other parts are gonna react in order to balance the humanoid. And actually, I was working on how to. I was working on, working on it in order to make it kick, but in order to kick, we need to lift one leg and kick, which is way harder than walking forward, backward, or even like dancing around. So I was working on it, but it's not perfect. But if you cover the front eye sensor, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, I was pretty proud when I first... <laughs> I, you could do it on the... Because I have a rubber board in my house. You could do it on the rubber board, but it doesn't... It doesn't you cannot do it on the plastic. On the hard? Uh, on, the, yeah, on the hard because surface. Because you're not counterbalancing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically this was my project that I started, started with, with no knowledge of Arduino programming or robotics at all. And I think I did pretty a good job. <laughs> so what's, what's your next project? 
I mean, I wanted to make it, you know, the dance called Nene? <laughs> I wanted to make it dance Nene, but only problem was the motor. Sometimes different servo motors doesn't react as fast as I wanted to. And yeah, it's, my next project will be, you know, make it dance more, you know, naturally with biometric movement. Well. Do you do it to walk across the room? Uh, By itself? I have, to I have to put another program in. But I can make a walk though. Can you make a follow something that will manage? Uh, I feel like I could if I use the infrared light sensor or you know, different kind of sensor. Yeah, but I was only given with 16 servo motors and 4 IR sensors to work with. And uh, this is what I got. So you don't have any kind of accelerometer or gyroscope at all? Uh, no. No? That's kind of... Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Neat, but... Yep. For well. your birthday, we'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it needs one, yeah. So yeah, it, we, it does. And they're one. cheap, too, so... Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, well, and this is basically my project. And thank you for listening to... this project on the net. I had to do it. I was inspired by this guy. Uh, his website's called How Not to Engineer. And from that side, I kind of like, oh, I gotta do this. So at that point, I took his example, you know, modified some stuff of it to what I needed to do, what I thought was something really good really cool that I had. And then, you know, started working with another friend, did some smartphone stuff with it, and just a bit more than just what you see up here. And uh, I'll show you how I got there. So I kind of had to create, uh, well, you need to create a, a frame. You, know, you, you can't just like, doing this is, that's, that's even, it's, it's still not perfect, but it, you, you need a jig. So that's what this is. So Home Depot, some wood. Little by little, some wood. And then this is where something is going to be used. So you can see. Just eight across, and then you kind of have to like connect the. So these these RGB LEDs have four conductors. There's a common, and then there's a red, green, and blue. So the red, green, and blue are soldered in parallel, and then the other uh, red is uh, connected to the other uh, column LED. And if you just string them together, well, you can make you can make a layer. So that's that's one layer. A lot of soldering. Got some stuff. There's some columns I've been building. And those are all the LEDs. Yeah, it's not just LED as you get them. You have to bend them and make, make get them to shape before you put them in a the jig. Uh, then those are the, those are all the LEDs. That's 512 of them. That's probably about so half a half a jig. So you want colors? Colors. Red, yeah. green, and blue. Colors. That's 512 LEDs, which is 8 by 8 by 8 by 8, that's, that's 512. So, uh, 
stickers and the ticket is <laughs> solder job each one. You can see there's clamps I got from Harbor Freight, and now there's a solder, like I said, the red, green, and blue leads in parallel to each other that are clamped. And uh, the other leg is leading out to the right side. There's a string, and then there's a lead. And there's, there's that part done. <laughs> that's only one part of many more to come. And that's, that, that's a layer. There's, that's three layers. Three layers. That probably took maybe about a week. But me on and off doing it. There's patience, like one spin after the first layer, and then okay, I'm done for the today. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, it takes a lot out of me. Uh, oh, turning up with the base. Base, half saw. Uh, I just got a Home Depot coming piece of wood. That's pretty cool. I don't have everything in my. Man, so you, know, you, got, you gotta get the other pieces of it. Yeah, so I went ahead and got that piece of plywood and put some corners on it in the box. And then just go forward, slide it on the top of the base. Okay. First, you need to get a hardware and a hardware. This is where I deviated from the original plan. I don't know why I kind of wanted to do it. He didn't explain how to do make the box. I kind of what I can try to do, what I know so far. Then the other side is kind of stuff. And then the, you can see, I had to score the thing. I need to make a matrix and then I line up the thing and create a whole very simple one. I believe they're about three eighths of an inch. Enough to just slide them through. I can already use the inside. Acrylic piece and a piece of wood just to protect it so you can go through all the way. That's kind of a tool. So I use this Fino 32, which is basically using a Pic 32 processor. So it's, it's more powerful, but it's the same Arduino I've been using. Nothing really changed. Now, the code that I used, I've actually forked from the guy and modified it a bit in certain areas, such as uh, there's, there's a way to drive the LEDs. And I, I had to change it because my electrical hardware is different and has different drive systems and it's pretty some amount, but mostly the same. Eighty percent. And then I went ahead and said, okay, now let's start to put these LEDs in this acrylic piece. And I had to, had to solder all these guys. There's lots of them. I mean that's that's the string as it's dangling down. Kind of cool. And then when you look at that it looks like, oh man, it's so tricky. To bring down the, the you know, black hole, it's like sick. And there's that part. And it's still, you know, you, you can see that I made all the layers, but it's, it's still not, you know, the structure needs more support. So I went ahead and started doing some more. Actually, no, it's not, not this one, it's just more pictures of it. Oh, then I have to measure, you know, making sure the distance is. Still the same. Okay, this is where it got kind of tricky. So not only do I have to solder the layers uh, as, as a, uh, a plane, but you have to solder them across between the adjacent layers. And I got tricky. That's where that's where you got a soldering iron. You have to kind of go like this. I was a pain in the ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, you have the hot wheel. It's, it needs a pretty damn good stable and appearance on the Piece. And I think I'm done doing the back, and I'm just going to let it go. I think I'm done. These are all the deep ones. And, oh, and then I, I had this machine where I can make a circuit board or a PCB, two layers, which is called the other mill. I tried to make a PCB for this cube. Um, this is making it really. That's the driver section, by the way, for the LED versus the 
in a certain sense, like this is a group that works on the And we need to be hooked up to their power, and then we will be pulled to ground by these characters, our characters in this game. We'll pull to ground. My machine's working. Oh, wait, no, we got, it broke. That's not good. I said, crap, plan B. So I, I went the hardcore way. I got all the chips. And then I got these smart boys. And I bread boy the thing. <laughs> well, well, this is me with my uh, hot, hot air reading station. So I can stop every time I play this game. Got a good amount of chips. That's, that's how we look with all the flux. And I clean them up and put them in alcohol. Jar for alcohol and sugar. Clean it up a bit. And then there's the bread board. It's one problem. And then there's that, which probably is their power. And then I have to get all the other wires hooked up to the LEDs. So there's 512 points to these on, on that board I need to hook up to these strands of wood and cable. See, I need more bundles and cable. I look like my very picture. And then there's my breadboard. And then there's one part of getting that going. Oh, we need a label and everything. You can get lost with all those wires because it's kind of it's very helpful. You don't want to lose track of which is where. So, the G something is basically the like, which element is that top section. So, once I did that, there's, there's that. That monstrosity, that's like a freaking octopus. That's a jeep right there. But yeah, and I was like, whoa, they need to be way more. The funny thing is, like, electrically, nothing went wrong. It went perfectly. So I, 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 I don't know, I, I think I do a pretty good job when it comes to stuff like this. I, I don't miss software, not so much, but with getting it electrically sound, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. And there's me <laughs> hooking up now the interface between that you know octopus wire harness to the breadboard so you can see that just staring at the board right now so that's done. That. Oh there you go. Now it's done. Looks like that. And then that's me in the morning. I don't know what's up all that this morning. Uh, this is the driver section the low side driver section. That's on another breadboard, and that was supposed to be that PCB, but you know something happens that happens out. There's a five volt power supply at like 20 amps, which is well six amps, because these LEDs can require quite a bit of current. There's just so many of them, and uh, I think this is where I hook it up. Put it to the side. Hook up the Arduino. Hook up the 120. And then run in my bath and start taking some pictures. <laughs> so, and, and there you go. That's the LED key. So each one of those lights is individually addressed, right? Yes. 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 And have you tried to do anything like with character pictures to add to those or whatever other people have that? I, uh, I have, but since I'm kind of like over the place and I have ADD, <laughs> Once I try to do it, I kind of put it on the side, and that, that one would, I thought took more a little bit more effort, so it, it, it was getting a bit. I didn't, I didn't do. Well, you, yeah, if there's a lot of characters in there, you probably would make that into a big thing. Kind of just do it in the face of the mirror. Oh, yeah, you can you can do quite a thing. But after building the thing and the program, I'm like yeah, I think I'm done for. I don't want to look at it because <laughs> well, I remember all that hard work. All the hard work like, dude, this is painful. Yeah. Well, I got it left. Software shows you too bad. But that's one of my, my other fun problems that comes in. I'm like, look, I did all this. You can come in and you put in your idea where you want to get a sensor and do some kind of like feedback. So it's like, all right, I'll do that. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm out of here. So what you can do feedback. chase with, with two joysticks uh -huh. and have people chase each other. Oh, I think that would be a cool one. I think I like that idea. Do you move in three dimensions with the joystick? Well, you have a button. Yeah, you can have, you, you have the plane, the X, Y, Z, and then the Z, you might have like the pull up or pull down on it. Or just up, down. That's a great idea. You know, it's the same cause, you know, 
Yes. Oh, well, all of them are gonna move. Let's do this. You know, so if, so how it works is it's going really fast in games like that. There's there's PLD going on, but I'm pretty sure when I was running it at full, it was around like 3.5 amps. It looks like it, almost all of them turned on. I think, and that's the output of the 120 going into my uh, watt meter. Cause I was curious about. Oh, that so too. you kilowatt. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, something so it's about three something amps. But it gets pretty warm the power comes on. Yeah. Yeah. And it works, that's the thing. I was like, oh it's amazing. <laughs> We're I'm, just, I'm surprised you got all that with no sleeving, so you just have to air air gap because it's your insulator. Uh yeah. just need your leads. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of projects. Uh, where people do a 4x4 four four and this. There's even a 16x16 16 by 16 by hand. I'm not sure if I want to go that far. But the largest one I've seen is a 32x32x32 32 by 32 by 32 in China. And I'm like, okay, I think they're cheating. They must have some kind of master, master belt that they can do that just right. Because, I mean, I, I think 8x8 eight eight is like getting there, and 16x16 16 is 16 really pretty crazy. Because that's, how would you, 6x16, six like, it's the structure, look at this thing. It's like junk. So my name is Aaron. Of course, you didn't read my <laughs> name tag. Um, I got two projects. Um, booting up for that, but this, uh, and I, I need my Arduino for something else, so I don't, I'll try to get it going. Um, just an Arduino Uno. Uh, in here, I have two solid state relays. Um, and then, <laughs> IR sensor and just uh, a little speaker. So I built this last year. Um, yeah, you're not gonna hear anything, but uh, this is my house, uh, and this was for Halloween. So I, the idea is using the IR sensor. Um, you know, got my garage, and you have to walk around the corner to walk up to my door. So that's what I'm trying to show here. Uh, so as the kids come around the door, my IR sensor will pick them up, and this is what happens. So you can sort of hear these high-pitched sounds. I'm just playing notes at random. Uh, flashing the lights at random, uh, and then moving and this little spider thing is, uh, I didn't mean it to be a spider, <laughs> but because <laughs> I didn't want it to be something too scary for kids, but you know, it looks like, uh, let's go back to instruct a little scary. Yeah, so if you want to build this, um, 
here's the video, here's ah, the box. Here's your bill of materials. So I got a lot of the parts at uh, well, either Home Depot or Michaels. So this is what's inside this little box. You know, it's just a standard uh, junction box. You know, for electrical. I had these brackets here. You can use any. It's just something I ha happen to have. Um, you know, I just provide, tell you how to do it. Here's the solid state relay. Here's just a power outlet. Oh, so yeah, inside I have just an extension cord, and then I plug in a USB power supply and the power to the socket. And here's the solid state relay. And, you know, again, I wanted it all to be sealed. Uh, actually, I added it this this year. I forgot to put it up there. Uh, this is just a place for the connections. It's just a this line is all, it's like a breadboard, except when I built this, I didn't have a, I had run out of breadboard, so. Uh, so here's the Cosaurus spider. So I, <clears throat> I just got a hanger that you, if you dry clean your pants, you know, take off the, the paper part. Um, and then I just tied a, uh, a string to the uh, servo. Here's the schematic. Um, you know, so I got the solid state relay, your power outlet, the motion sensor. I, there was that little owl, uh, owl that had LEDs and they turn off and on. The servo that goes to the, the you know, moves a little spider, and then the speaker. And here's the, the code, uh, or, you know, the, well, here's a link to the GitHub, so if I want to get to it. This is a file, if you go to this tutorial on Tone, they give you this file that you have to download. And so I just pick random. Uh, That's basically it. Then the other project I'm working on, uh, let me see if this thing booted up. Um, This is a robotic arm kit that you can get on Amazon for uh, around $40. Uh, you, I mean, a lot of places sell it, but Amazon has the, the best, uh, best price. Uh, and it came with this uh, controller. Uh, one of the interesting things about it It uses, this falls apart here. So in this base here are four D batteries. They're connected in series. Um, but this, this controller, uh, all it does is connect Either, you know, if you have the four batteries, it either connects these like this or these two down here. So that gives you the forward and reverse. Uh, 
D batteries are expensive. They're like two bucks a, a cell. Uh, so I actually wired here, put in, uh, you know, so I, I bought two little power plugs, three volt, and I wired it in so I don't have to, uh, you know, use up all my batteries. Uh, but then, um, last Thursday or Friday, I said, well, I've been wanting to connect a Arduino to this. Um, and I haven't got around to it. I said, I, you know, I have to do it because uh, I want to show it at the Maker Fair. Uh, so I originally had a motor shield. Uh, and I was going to use the, you know, just a regular Arduino. But uh, I've had a couple of interviews at Intel. Uh, Intel is actually going to develop a lot of their underlying software for their, their Galileo, the Edison. They're announcing a new board in, in here shortly. Uh, so I figure if I do something with the Galileo, <laughs> maybe I'll increase my <laughs> chances of getting a job. Um, although, one of the neat things they've done since uh, I got the Galileo, because I got this when it first came out, which was a little over a, a year ago, almost two years ago. Uh, they have um, what they call the Intel XDK, which is a thing for the Inter Internet of Things, although for some reason it's not booting up. Um, but what you can do is uh, program the Galileo using Node, uh, which is JavaScript. Um, and so that's what I was trying to do, because that way you can you know, just have a, a web interface, and then you can control this. And I don't know why this is not coming up. Actually, well, so the although the Galileo is supposed to be you know Arduino compatible, it, they don't have all the software running. So the Motor Shield I had, uh, they don't have a, a library for it, and I didn't want to spend you know, try to fix it. So there's these little motor control boards um, that just take two inputs for each, I mean, there, you can control two motors from one board, and you just need two inputs. Um, and the chips actually support anywhere from 3 volts to 12 volts. Um, and so, you know, I, I, got, I got this to work first with this, the hand, and then I found uh, someone that calls this the wrist. Uh, and so I ordered two of these. These are just $6 on, on Amazon. Um, so just before I came here, I mean, let's see what time is it? So, yeah, so about an hour ago, I got it working at home. And now I don't know why it's not working. It moved. I, I know, when you power up, you know, something in the, uh, when it's doing the I.O., setting up the I.O. Does your router have to connect to the internet? It shouldn't have to, but I don't know. The other reason uh, I wanted the Galileo, uh, because if you look here, I presented this earlier this year, uh, which was this uh, Arduino box that's in uh, my garage now, so I can open and close my garage door from my phone. Um, so I gave a presentation, when was it, in 
May or June, <laughs> something like that. Um, and I'm working on a new version of this using a Raspberry Pi. And with the Raspberry Pi, I'm doing it again in, with Node. Uh, I wanted a, a web interface. And I figure if I have to do, learn JavaScript, I might as well you know, just learn one language, not, not you know, have to learn two or three. Again, you know, both the, the Halloween scene controllers on Instructables, and, and so is this the garage door open. So does that just give you contact closures to tell it to go up or down? That's Basically, your, I simulate the button that you normally have to on the side of your inside your car. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, now this requires a home automation gateway. I have one from a company. They used to be called Mikasa Verde. They're now Vera Limited or something like that. Um, one of the nice things about it is uh, their APIs are open, so you can design your own products and then hook it up into their uh, gateway. Uh, with the Raspberry Pi version, I wanted it to be standalone, and I, uh, I want it to uh, have a camera so you can see inside your garage. And with this and, and the ra Raspberry Pi version, I, I can actually, I control my irrigation also. That's it. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this thing here. All right, so we open Q&A. So you can ask more questions.